A new report uh, from the Anti-Defamation League giving poor grades to social media platforms when it comes to supporting targets of online hate and harassment. The grades run the gamut from a B for Twitch and a C for Instagram to an F for Snapchat. Joining us right now, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and director, uh, national director of the Anti-Defamation League. Good morning to you. Uh, you're, you're the teacher in this, uh, in this case. Right. Go through the grades, but maybe even before you do the grades, how you, how you came to them? How are you measuring these companies? So, look, the ADL has been tracking hate, you know, for over 100 years. And now we see social media has really become the super spreader of hate and harassment. We do annual polls, and we found that this year more than 52 percent of Americans report receiving abuse, being harassed on these platforms. I mean, that's over half of their adult users in America. So those numbers are astounding. And actually, four out of five people who've seen violent threats directed at them receive no feedback, no support from the platforms at all. Why don't people stay on these platforms if it's nothing? I think these numbers. platforms have become so integrated into our lives, right? It's how we shop. It's how we socialize. It's how we search for information. And yet, again, they are vectors of abuse. And these are some of the most sophisticated, profitable companies in the world. I mean, think about Snapchat. It's got an $18 billion market cap, doing amazing things with, you know, half a billion users. And yet we give it an F because you can't get real-time support if you're harassed. You can't batch report if you've experienced, you know, hate. Simple things they could do. I, I want to dig into what hate represents because I think it's a question. Sure. Uh, but this is Linda Yaccarino, the new CEO of X, yeah. formerly Twitter, just eight hours ago posting the following. She says, free expression and platform safety are not at odds. Is that true? Is well, that possible? It's, that certainly seems to contradict what we're seeing on almost all of these services. Now, look, they announced their reorg at X yesterday, and now Linda is in charge of trust and safety. That's a good thing, because she understood how to handle these issues, I believe, at NBC Universal. But the truth is, is that what we're seeing on Twitter, X, today is really alarming. But let's just define hate. When you talk about hate, I imagine there are folks uh, who, if they were uh, filling out a survey, would say they feel like they've received hate online. By mm -hmm. the way, I, unfortunately, feel like I received hate <laughs> Every hour. Yeah, I'm receiving online. it right now as I. But I would not. And, and, and look, I actually read it and try to uh, be as introspective as I can and say maybe I got to do this or that or whatever. And sometimes they're crazy and sometimes it's real. Right. But that kind of hate is different, I think, than some of the true hate and hate crimes effectively that take place on social media. So how, how do you differentiate between that? Well, look, we've certainly seen where rhetoric online creates world, real world consequences offline, Andrew, right? So we've seen a connection. But how do I define it? Look, these platforms need to center the user's experience. So we talked to a Holocaust survivor who told us how she regularly gets messages like, how did you enjoy the showers? Now, I understand that how do you enjoy the showers if you're walking out of a locker room may, may be benign. But directed at a right. Holocaust survivor, that's absolutely a kind of hate that no platform should tolerate. You gave the highest grade to Twitch? Yeah. Let's, most people don't even think about Twitch in, in sort of sure. the classic social media land. Twitch, of course, owned by Amazon. Correct. But take us farther down the chain. So where does Facebook land? Facebook gets a C minus. X, Twitter, gets a C minus. Discord, which is really just a rancid place, gets a D. And again, Snap gets an F. But Twitch did well. YouTube scored a C. Insta score to see, TikTok score to see. So there's a range. And was that a function, do you think, of safety teams that you think are doing a better job on those platforms? Do yeah. you think it's really about the type of person and the community and the kind of language that is considered acceptable on certain platforms? I mean, it nope. seems to me, even, even as you know, Instagram was starting threads, for example, it seemed like that was a happier uh, less hateful place, at least at the beginning of the party. We'll see how the party we'll, progresses. We'll see. But do you see what I'm saying? I mean, Absolutely. is it about the community and the way they've sort of created an environment, or is it about the technology of, of effectively, and some people call it censoring, yeah. and, and removing either people from the platform or posts from the platform? I don't think applying editorial standards 
and basic rules of the road is censorship. So you know I don't agree with that in general. But more specifically, it's about the platform and the values that they drive. So LinkedIn is a place where we don't see any of this kind of abuse. Whereas, again, on Discord, which is filled with right-wing extremists and all kinds of uh, hateful people. It's, it's a different, different issue, um, but given the amount of thought you've given to this, yeah. what did you think about the report just last week? Um, I mean, the uh, Twitter files are one thing, but there's this, you know, the, the Facebook files that emerged around yeah. the White House's influence yeah. over, over COVID information during the pandemic, yeah. the pressure that was brought to bear uh, against uh, Facebook executives, the ruling in Florida by the judge who effectively said that this administration should not be yeah. in communication about uh, some of these yeah. things. You agree with that? You disagree with that? So I do not agree with that. Look, I think if we looked at what happened during COVID, let's acknowledge that public health officials, you know, companies, civil society, we were all struggling to make sense of this moment. And no one really had their act together and understood what was behind the virus. How did we stop its transmission, et cetera? So I think government trying to work with the companies to be responsible and get the right information out to the public, I don't think right. that's necessarily so. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate because I actually happen to agree with you, but there yeah. is an argument to be made that it's coercive. That when a government official calls you uh, at a tech company that you someone that they can regulate, regulate you. when right. someone can regulate you and they ask you to do something, it's different. It's like the chairman of an oversight committee calling you when you're the bank they oversee and saying, yeah. "Give me money for my finance campaign." Look, it's a fair question. Like in a free society, I think we have to assume some modicum of trust for the public servants and the you know the democracy in which we live. <laughs> Nobody rates lower than journalists except for publicly elected <laughs> officials when no. it comes to trust barometers. Yeah, look, these are complicated issues, but I give them the benefit of the doubt and think that they're trying to do their best. I mean, as someone who formerly worked in government, I understand the conflict, but I think we've got to recognize these decisions are made in real time. They're not but easy. But there's got to be a better way to do it. You can't like have it.